Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Today's recipe it is really easy baguette bread. It's a version that anybody can make at home. They're really easy to pull together. Let me show you how. Hear that? Nice and crusty. Before we get started, please be kind and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, your likes to this video is very much appreciated. Thank you. This is a type of baguette bread that's made in bakeries when there's no sourdough available. So to get started, you'll need a mixing bowl. I'm using a KitchenAid mixing bowl, but you use whatever you have, and you'll need a dough hook. I like to weigh my ingredients, so I use my handy dandy scale. That's how I learned. It's foolproof, it works amazing, and it's the best way to make sure that your bread recipe is accurate. For the ingredients, it's the four basic ingredients of bread baking flour, yeast, salt, and a liquid, in this case, water. I have in here my all-purpose flour. Now, you could certainly use bread baking uh, flour for this recipe, but the hydration, uh, which is a liquid, is going to change just a little bit because the um, bread flour has more gluten. To the all-purpose flour, I wanna add in yeast. Now, in bread baking school, we use a lot of fresh yeast. The thing with fresh yeast, it's, uh, the shelf life is very short, so I tend to use um, instant yeast, or for example, I'm using this quick rise yeast here, but any um, instant yeast or rapid rise works. You can use active dry yeast, but the difference with the active dry yeast is you need to bloom the yeast first in a little bit of the liquid and maybe a pinch of sugar. So in any event, I have this here. I'll give it a little mix to get that uh, yeast uh, incorporated. And then I'm gonna pour in my liquid. The liquid could be as room temperature and it's good old water. I also weigh the water. I'm going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. It could go up to 30 minutes. This process is called autolyse and it helps the yeast to start working and marry with the flour and the liquid. So I'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. So the flour, yeast and water have auto lease. And now I wanna add in my salt. And I want to set this at a speed, uh, no more than a two, anywhere from one to two works. So I'm gonna get this started. And once the flour and water and the other ingredients are incorporated and start to form a dough, I'll increase the speed. Starting at a low speed really prevents the flour from making a royal mess. Okay, here you could see the dough has uh, started to for form. I'm gonna increase the speed to about six. Increasing the speed can result in the stand mixer sliding off the counter, and it's happened to me before. To prevent that from happening, use a wet rag and place your stand mixer on it. I'm actually using a lift and around the base of the stand mixer, there are knobs to hold it in place. Okay, the dough has been kneading for about three minutes or so. That's all the time that you need to knead it. This mixing process is called a short mix. And as you can see, the dough is still very sticky. That's really how it should look right now. To have the ability to develop more gluten as it ferments. So I'm just going to take this out and get it onto a grease bowl. I'm using a rubber spatula to get the dough out of the bowl, but you could also use a rubber bench scraper. So it's nice and soft. There's no, um, not enough gluten uh, development in here yet. Uh, it's going to get a chance to develop gluten as it rests. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just cover this with plastic wrap and then I want it to rest for 20 minutes. It's going to begin that fermentation process. Um, and then once that happens, I'm going to do a series of a fold. So the first fold will be in 20 minutes. And I'll show you what I mean by a fold when I do it. Okay, so the dough has been uh, resting or fermenting for 20 minutes and I want to do the first fold. This is the first in a series of three folds. 
And really what this is going to do, it's going to help the dough to develop gluten. How gorgeous is this? To make the fold, just use your fingertips. Go all the way to the middle, fold over to the middle. It's going to be sticky, but that's okay. It's going to get less sticky as the uh, gluten develops. You could already see it's sticking to the bowl less. Okay, I'm going to cover this and let it rest for another 20 minutes. So another 20 minutes have gone by. Let's take a look. Look at this. Gorgeous. You can now see how the folds are helping to develop the gluten and the dough is becoming more elastic. Okay, so I'm going to do one more fold in 60 minutes this time. Okay, it's been 60 minutes, so time for the final fold. Wow. Look at that. How beautiful is that? You can see how the dough has fermented, it's bulked up beautifully, and the structure is looking really beautiful. Now what I want to do is just cover it again and let it ferment for two hours before shaping and baking. At this stage, you could sit it in the refrigerator overnight, up to 24 hours. You'd want to take it out and come to bring it to room temperature before shaping and baking. But for today, I'm going to let it ferment for two hours at room temperature and then shape, let it rise again and bake. Whenever I'm making baguettes, one of the equipment I use is this beautiful stoneware baguette uh, baker. What I like about it, it's great because with a baguette, you need to create steam and this creates a perfect amount of steam because the bread is baked covered. So I highly recommend getting one of these. You want the, there's some without the cover, but you really want the one with the cover because home, most home bakers really don't have a steam oven. I certainly don't have a steam oven. I don't think it's worth it uh, for home bakers, but this um, vessel here, a baguette baker works perfectly. Okay, beautiful people, it has actually been about an hour and a half and I took a look at the dough and look at this. It looks really doubled. So one and a half to two hours is usually perfect. Okay, so I transferred the dough to a very lightly floured surface. I like to weigh the portion size so they fit perfectly in the crevices. I also save a small piece of the dough. Uh, this is going to be a pre-ferment, if you will, that I will use in future baguette bread and it will add flavor. Here I'm pre-shaping the dough into logs. To do that, I'm using the length or horizontal side of the dough using the two ends and pulling it into the middle it'll make the baguette shape much easier to perform and resting for 10 minutes will allow the final shape to be much easier actually been about 15 minutes so it's time to do my final shape and then the beautiful thing after it's shaped it goes right into the baker covered it's going to uh, final proof for about 30 to 35 minutes and then it goes into the oven covered. I'm using some semolina flour to dust the crevices to prevent sticking. You could also use some cornmeal. And you actually really don't need additional flour to do the final shape because if you put too much flour on the dough at this point, it's going to be very difficult to hold the shape out because you're looking for a baguette shape, hence the name of baguette which is really elongated um, and has tapered tips if you want, slightly tapered. To shape the baguette, I first flatten it with my palm and that's really taking out any excess gas. And then I use the thumb of one of my finger, position it to one end of the dough in the center and then roll the dough along over the thumb sealing it with my other palm just like that using both hands i then roll the dough back and forth to elongate it i need about a 12 to 13 inch uh, length that fits right into the crevice of the stoneware breaker certainly you can use the stoneware baker as a gauge to measure the length of the dough 
When making this final shape, you really don't want to add any more flour to the work surface. You can use the bench scraper to help lift the dough off the counter if any of it is sticking. Adding more flour is just going to give you resistance and the shape of the baguette will be very hard to form. These baguette look so beautiful. Now I want to cover it with the stoneware cover and rest for 30 to 35 minutes. The bread is just about ready for the oven. But before I do that, I want to score it. Oops. I have this uh, equipment here. It's called a lame. Lamb, lame. It's really just a razor blade attached to this easy to use handle. You could just take a sharp, fresh, clean razor blade and score it. So I'm going to give it a score now. Let's take a look. Whoa. You know that the dough is ready when you use your finger to press it lightly and it snaps back at you. You can then score it three to five scores. Odd numbers are better. Okay, so this is ready. I'm going to cover it and get it into the oven, which is being preheated at 475 degrees. The baguette is smelling amazing. Who can resist the smell of bread? It's ready. Let's go check. Wow. You can see the steam coming out of here. The moment of truth. Let's take a look. Ooh, watch out. Beautiful, beautiful. Tap, tap. They're nice and hollow. Look at that beautiful color. I just want to cool these completely on a wire rack. Beautiful are these baguettes. You really should wait for bread to cool, cool, cool down completely because it's still cooking, but I can't wait. Who doesn't like a warm bread? I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. Hear that? Nice and crusty. Uh, <laughs> the crust is so crusty, you can hear that bang. And the crumb on the inside is nice, has a gorgeous texture. You see some holes here? which is something that you would see more of if you use the sourdough. So if the dough was refrigerated overnight, you would have more of these pockets. I can't wait to taste. I like the end, so I'm gonna go with an end. Please. You could put some butter. I'm going to be serving this with my meatball as a sandwich. Wow. You could hear the crust. This is so good. It's a must try. I do hope that you take the time to make this recipe and enjoy it as much as we do. Until next time, happy cooking. Subscribe to our food blog to get notification whenever we post a new recipe and follow us on Instagram.